is, you know, we're trying to press through. We're trying to um, remind ourselves the things that we learn um, all week, you know, to respond well, to, um, you know, not get in our bag. But I have to be honest with you. Um, the more that you respond to God in a positive way and stay focused is the more that the enemy is going to press on you. So what am I saying? Those things that you're praying about, um, the estranged children or, you know, the husband, the finances, it's going to look like it's getting worse. It's going to look like there's no breakthrough because in the beginning it looks so fine. You know, when you, when you first come to God and just everything seems so glorious, you seem so naive. And as you continue to walk, um, it seems like there's like a hindrance. It seems like every time you take two steps forward, something's trying to pull you back. And you have to understand that we are in harvest season. And because we are, we are in harvest season, because God has promised us some things, you have an enemy looking to what? He looking to devour you, the Bible says. Kill, steal, and destroy. So he wants to derail your mind. He wants to derail your purpose. Good morning. He wants you to focus on the issue. So what am I saying? The more you stay positive, the more you stay focused, and you say, I'm going to trust God, I feel God. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to continue to do what he calls me to do. Uh, you know, I'm a tap in every morning. I'm a soul, whatever it takes. You have to understand that public en enemy number one is going to knock at your door. And whoever is around you that's in your circle, that's not truly, truly guarded and prayed up. Or even yourself, you know, the little things that seem to aggravate you is going, I'm glad you made it too, is going to be more magnified. You know, um, something that you probably wouldn't even pay attention to, you know, as you're focusing on God and doing right, might get on your nerve, you know, agitate you more. And you have to understand it's because the enemy wants to derail you. You have to understand that God allows it. And we're going to talk about that today. God allows it because he wants to prune you. And these past couple of days, I just been dealing with something and I'm like, you know, God, I, I you tell me to mend certain relationships. You tell me to sit at this table, you know, it, you know, I know more is required of thee, but certain things I feel like is resurfacing that I had peace from. And I'm like, I don't understand that because you said that you give me peace that surpasses all understanding. You said that, you know, um, to trust you. And I just feel like, the things that are resurfacing are things that I don't have to deal with. It's things that you are asking me to deal with. And I heard him so clearly. And he showed me the children of the Israelites, right? He showed me the Israelites. And he showed me how they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. And it was a it was supposed to be an 11-day journey. And he showed me that the reason why they wandered, it was because... They didn't get it. It's because certain things will come back. It will resurface and they will handle it. Come on, God, I need your help on this. I, this is very, very serious. And they will handle it the same way and respond to it the same way every time. And he said, Fallon. And I learned that when I'm usually going through something, you guys are usually going to, through it too. I mean, I'm either going through it for you or, or because you're going through it, he allows me to go through it so I can show you how to get out of it. But usually we are on one accord. And even though we're not jumping on the phone, uh, uh, you know, texting one another and telling one another what we going through, you know, we're trying to push through. We're trying to respond well, and I just really feel God. Let me pray real quick, because I just want to get into this, because this is really important, and I just believe that this is going to carry us. I even see that glow again, and usually when, when the atmosphere is set like this, this is nothing but God, nothing but the Holy Spirit, and I know in my heart that this will change someone's life, and not only someone's minds too, because I know I need this. Simply, I just seen your name pop up. And I don't know, I had a dream about you last night and you were hitting me up talking about congratulations and all that. And I'm like, I didn't do anything. So I don't know what's in order for you, but you came across um, my heart last night. And, you know, I hope all is well with you and the family and, and, and your, new, your, your new marriage. So, Father God, I just come to you right now, God. I just thank you for 
this time that we can come together and fellowship. God, I know our country has a lot of flaws, God. No one is perfect, but God, I thank you that our country is a country that we can come together and that we can praise and worship you and don't have to be worried about being murdered or judged. Oh God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you will come and meet us, God, that you will send the Holy Spirit, God, that the helper will come and help us understand how to understand the pruning process and how to respond well to pruning. Oh God, I pray that whatever need it is that that, uh, that the congregation needs, God, I pray that you will meet them right where they're at. I pray that you will give them peace that surpasses all understanding, God. Oh, God, I pray that there would be no distractions in this life, that there would be uh, 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 no stumbling over my words, no nervousness, God, ease any anxiety that I may have, God, and bring forth this word that we will understand it, God, and that we will apply it to our lives, Father God. Oh, God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, anyone who doesn't have a relationship with you, that today will be the day that they will decide to read their Bibles more, to get into, to know you, to be more intimate with you, to have a relationship with you as you will come and dine in their hearts as the scriptures say. So Father God, we just thank you, God. We thank you for forgiving us for our sins, our past, our present, and, and, and things that may happen, you know, the future. Because as long as we're in this body, we know that there's going to be fleshly things. But God, we ask you to kill those things, God. Kill those things. Let those things die and let it be more of you, God. Remove anything in us, God, that is not of you and replace it with more of you. God, we want to have more of you. God, we want to have your presence more. Oh God, we, we want to dine with you. We want to dance with you. God, we are tired of seeking your hands, God. We want to learn, God, how to seek your face in this hour, God. Oh God, we know that you said that harvest season is here, but Father God, we just want to thank you for taking us through, God. Taking us through the journey, God. That we don't smell like smoke, God. We don't look like what we've been through, God. While everyone is destitute, while everyone is, is going down, God, even with death, even with sadness, God, we are prevailing and we are going up just as you promised us, God. So, God, we love you, God. And, God, some of us, God, even have to forgive you this morning because pruning doesn't feel good, God. So, God, by the end of this service, God, let us learn how to even forgive ourselves and for, 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 for not forgiving you that you prune those who you love. You chastise those who you love. If your hand is on our life, if you're correcting us, it's because you're trying to complete us. Let us understand that, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, amen, 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 amen. It's going to be a lot of restoration before the end of this live. There's going to be a lot of restoration and there's going to be a lot of restoration within. A lot of restoration within because we're all struggling and as much as we say we're not, we're all struggling with the validation of people. I found myself yesterday studying Bible churches, right? And one of my sisters that I that I talked to that we often check on one another. She was like, basically what she was saying without saying it was like, you don't need it though. Like you don't need it. Foul. I see many people with so much paperwork and they're not effective. Like you, you, you're literally changing my life and other lives. And the truth of the matter is I was trying to rationalize, like, you know, maybe it's because, you know, we'll get more funds. You know, if I get the 501 C and I probably still get the 501 C, but just won't go as extensive as I was trying to do to really please people and no, nothing happened. You know, where anybody said anything to me, it just came up. It, it just came across me. And at the end of the day, it really is validation because I feel like I'm doing something that's out of the norm. And when you're doing something that's out of the normal, when you're doing something that's unorthodox, when you're being a game changer, right? I'm setting, I'm, I'm changing the game. I really am. God is changing the game through me. Unorthodox, okay? And it can get a little intimidating. Even me, someone who has a lot of power, very effective, big mouth. Even me, I have those moments where there's a little vulnerability to feeling a little insecure, feeling like, you know, maybe I should do this to come, it could come on easy, or maybe, you know, the, the people will respond well. And it's like, oh, child with little faith, I have called you up. I have done this and I have backed you up when you, I didn't make a public announcement when I said I was doing the Bibles. I just did it. I don't make a public announcement when I feed a family, when I bless a family, I just do it. I trust those who sow and, and, and whatever God has blessed me and whatever I have, I, I use. And the thing is, 
means God has financially blessed us, this ministry to do what we need to do. He has captivated us. He has uh, put us through the nations. People all over the world truly watch us, whether it's live or on, or on replay. He has done everything that he promises in the word of God that he would do for those who diligently seek him. So Fallon, why are you trying to do that when you didn't even hear him? I didn't hear God, and I hear him very clearly. I didn't hear him say to do that. Thank you, Coco. Coco said you are truly blessing the people. Thank you, and it's through the Holy Spirit. But the truth of the matter is, I did that because there was some insecurity in me. And see, people are getting in their feelings about the, the, the studies that we had this weekend about insecurity and and, and trying to make it personal. Listen, when I come on and I say certain things, it might be harsh, and, you know, and I'm praying on that. But I'm a harsh type of teacher. But it's only because, and, and, I'm, and I'm hard on my children. It's because I want to see the best out of you. I know that when God deals with us, though, it's compass, though he's compassionate and filled with grace and mercy, he is hardcore. His pruning doesn't feel good. His, his chastening doesn't feel good. When you read about him, especially in the Old Testament, you serve a hardcore God that, yes, he's filled with grace and mercy, but he don't play that. And sometimes, you know, we're so sensitive because we take everything so personal. And we have to understand in this hour, God is challenging us to be different, to think different. That's why even with me, I felt convicted a little bit towards the end because I heard him say, I didn't tell you to do that. It's not time yet. There's going to be a time that I have you do certain things because it's going to get you through certain doors. Because I see, I see me counseling the White House, all types of things, because I counsel a lot of people secretly. Secretly, I'm a lot of people go to. I'm their go to person, even if they don't say it publicly. I'm being so honest. So I see what he's doing through me. But he's like, I didn't call you to be trying to go to certain Bible schools and certain things. Now, there are certain things that I have given you that I have opened your eyes that people that are that went to biblical school haven't even touched on. I am him feeding you. I am teaching you so you can teach the people. And instantly, and I, I just was like, wow. And as I was going through some personal things, not even that, you know, that's just something I conjure up, but just personal things that I feel like that is attack on my peace. That is truly hurting me. I just kept saying, why am I resurfacing this again? God, why, why is this coming again? Because I was at peace. And all I'm doing is what you are asking me to do. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This walk is, it's a lot. And if I sit and I tell you guys that it's not a lot, I will be lying. But it's fulfilling. And it's necessary. And it is peaceful. And it's understanding. If you have a real relationship with God, he truly, truly not only gives you the desires of your heart, but he dines with you. He would tell you what it is. And I heard him so clearly. He said, there is certain tests you didn't respond well to. There are certain tests that you didn't pass. And although I'm elevating you and all, oh God, I, I pray they get it because you preaching to me too. And although I elevated you and although I'm taking you from glory to glory and I'm doing some magnificent things in your life, there are still certain tests that need to be passed. Because when you, when you don't pass that test and you respond the same way, that is a footstool for the devil. That is a footstool for the enemy to continue to attack you. Because remember we talked about that some attacks aren't different. It's the same old, same old. And we talked about passing those tests so we can get to the new new level devils, new devils. And many of us are, aren't even facing new devils. It's the same old devil with the same old tactic. And I was like, wow. But I'm like, but daddy, it hurts. It hurts. It hurts who the person is. It hurts what the situation is. And he's like, I know, but I need you to respond well. I need you to respond well. I need you, yeah, princess, if you can't say amen, say ouch. I need you to don't 
handle that situation the same way you used to handle it. Don't clap back the same way you need to, you, the same way you was clapping back. Don't, don't, don't get in your feelings about it. Don't let it get under your skin. Teach the person too, because even as you're elevating and as you're responding different to that situation, you're teaching the oppressor and the aggressor something. Because even they start to learn that they can't get the same reaction. And maybe they might have a self-reflection and say, maybe I need to do something different because I'm getting a different response. Yes, princess, I'm so proud of you. You have grown. I remember when you first tapped in and I, I, I don't get to respond to every comment and stuff. You know, I see them and I keep going to stay focused. But a lot of your responses lately... You're growing and I'm proud of you and stay focused, you know, because the enemy doesn't like when we grow, but you're growing and, you know, but stay the same. We love when we see you say good morning and all that. I love it, you know, but, but you're growing. And I, I just had to say to myself, wow, because you're, listen, a teacher is no better than a student. We, we, you know, in order for me to properly teach you I got to be making sure that I'm in a posture, that I'm in a correct, correct posture. And God is like, there's some things that you thought you ironed out that, my dear, you forgot about. Because I give you peace that surpasses all understanding. And I have you so much in this peace atmosphere that you forgot. Jasmine, I'm so proud of you too. Jasmine said, I'm so proud I made it my first week. Yes, and may God allow you to make every week. Make every week. I'm proud of you. It's not easy tapping. It's not easy getting up at 6 a.m. And many of us get up at 5, something or 5. And, you know, like Christina was saying one day when she was texting me, she was like, this is not for the faint. And it's not. This is truly for the hungry. This is truly for the ones. Good morning. This is truly for the ones that want more of God. This is truly for the ones that are setting their tables and want to dine with him. That are not just seeking his hand, but seeking his face. We want the glory, the full manifestations. And we understand in order for us to walk into harvest, in order for us to walk in our land of milk and honey, whatever it is, everyone harvests is different. I need you to understand that. Some people harvest is just reconciling with their children. They have their beautiful home. They have their husband and their great job, but the children has went astray. Oh, I feel that for someone. Some is, uh, is more security, feeling more secure about themselves. You know, secretly they're haters and can't really applaud when other people are winning and they're learning how to applaud for other people and have a, a, a mindset of peace. Everyone harvest is different. Harvest is not always financial. Some of us har harvest is just getting off of those medications and, and changing the dieting, being healthy and, and, and soaring. And our latter days are better than our former. Although we're getting older and we might be in our 50s and our 60s, we feel young and vibrant. Everyone harvest is different. And what God is trying to do is he's trying to change us up and build us up internally. He's allowing us to understand that even to receive harvest, you got to be prepared. You got to be different in every aspect. My God, it's a word. It's a word. I don't know who that is that always throws hearts and it has no face to it. I don't see the name, but I want to tell you that I see you. I see you. And though we might not know each other, I am so proud of you for tapping in. I don't have to know all of you. I don't have to have personal conversations with all of you. But as long as I know that I'm teaching you well and I'm leading you well and you tapping in is so fulfilling. But I do have to be honest with all of you. I am mandated to be honest. And certain things that I go through, I don't come on the phone and, and, and talk about it with everybody. But I'm obligated to my church family to, to allow you into certain things in my life. So you can see what it looks like behind closed doors. I don't understand why certain leaders don't want to be honest. Because the people need to know the struggles of the leadership. So you won't find it strange of the things that you go through. Because if leaders go through it three times and four times worse, I mean, could we tell the congregation so they know? So some things have resurfaced and God said, it's because I'm pruning you. Mm -hmm. 
And he said, just like when, uh, you know, architecture was a big thing back in the day. And that's what God uh, uh, uses to symbolize a lot of things that he does. And he's like, you see the gardener and you see him all the time. Snap 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 he's out there and you know and he's getting his fertile together but you see him a lot snapping the prettiest roses the prettiest trees the prettiest whatever you see him pruning and god said in this season in this moment that's what i'm doing with many of you i'm not going to keep you on long i am just going to read these these scriptures and bless you my name is Fallon Brown. I am an author of two published books. I am the pastor of Pray to Slay Ministries. I love to just hear that. You know, what God is doing through me is magnificent. He took a regular schmegler old chick from Bedside, Brooklyn, and uh, took her to the suburb, suburbs, taught her how to be a wife, taught her how to be a suburban mom, and just allowing her, who is me, just to live a peaceful, peaceful life. And um, I have a couple of businesses that I birthed through God that are becoming successful now. Thank God I'm able to pay my bills through them and and just just see God do amazing things in my life. And if you want that feeling, if you want the truth, not watered down, not um, added in, you know, just feel with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, you know, he meets us every day and you want to be a part of our internet church. All you have to do is tap in. We're here from Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. Some of you might be catching a replay as I say this. A lot of people tell me that the live experience is everything. So maybe you want to start uh, challenging yourself and give God your first fruit. Tap in and, and set your alarm clock and get up every morning. We all do it. And the sacrifice might be sleep, but the reward is amazing. The rest of our day is so much better because we we, we fellowship together. And, you know, we like to meet each other needs. Um, we do community work you know we're just doing what the four walls did but we're doing we're doing through the internet because the bible says that before god comes back that the gospel has to be spread through the whole world and i believe that we are in the last days and these are the times and these are the things that he meant when he said that the gospel will be spread through the whole world i believe it's through things like the internet amen so um this is our internet church and welcome to pray to slay ministries uh we are still working on because I lost the place that I was supposed to do the baptisms um, at. And I'm going to have a, 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 a one of my mentors come down. He's a great pastor uh, from, from the South. And we're going to get him down. We're going to pay for him and his wife. We're going to get him down. And I'm going to, you know, he's going to baptize you guys. And it's just going to be a wonderful, wonderful time. Uh, as soon as outside work, opening back up, um, I'm working on a conference um, somewhere where we can meet everyone in the middle. And we can just all... Um, come together, congregate together. And, you know, and I can bring forth the word and you guys can see me and hug on me and, and I can bless you and anoint your head with oil. So I'm just so excited about the things to come that even as I'm sitting here talking, God is downloading in me. It's so amazing. But I'm just really, really, really um, so excited and, and happy for us because we are in harvest season. But yeah, welcome to Pray to Slay Ministries. That's who I am. Um, today is Friday. So Fridays are, uh, forgiveness Fridays. We like to call it, which is AKA freedom Fridays. It's just something that God teaches us that in order to get to the next level, you know, you got to be in forgiveness. You know, you got to really walk this thing out. You got to be in love. And a lot of us want to pick and choose how we want to serve God. And over here, Jesus is real. We don't pick and choose how we live. You know, we, we we're, 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 um, moving forward to live right in the whole intensity we don't want to pick oh i don't want to love today oh i don't want to forgive today oh i want to be big, bitter today oh i want to be a hater today no that's not what we do what we do over here at pray to slay ministries is we challenge one another you know we challenge ourselves we mirror we look in the mirror we self-reflect it's not about everyone else it's about ourselves and as we change ourselves everything around us changes and i think that's what god was telling me when i was saying to him why do i feel this pain that feels familiar why am i going through this thing here and he's like i'm pruning you 
Pruden you. Today is sowing day. So those who want to sow their seeds, whether it's their tithes and offerings, I will have um, everything in the description. The, my Instagram people, you know, you DM me and I can give it to you. Sowing is for you. I want you to read Malachi 3. It teaches you the principles of sowing. Um, I mean, so yeah, so in this for you, it blesses you, you know, it's just, it's a way to get out of poverty. It just multiplies your seed. Amen. Something about releasing to give is just a powerful thing. And then it helps us to do a lot of things that we strive to do. Amen. So now I'm going through John 15 guys. A lot of you have gotten your Bibles. <laughs> Oh, uh, Yanni said I lost her. She lost her mind. I declare and I decree that there will be no distractions in the mighty name of Jesus, that she would get her value back. Oh, God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that, that the enemy would not stop your people from receiving and applying this word in Jesus' mighty name. Okay, so we're going to John chapter 15. I'm sorry, chapter 15. John chapter 15. I am just giving you a brief description on uh, backing up the pruning. Backing up that. Thank you, mama, for putting up um, the, the scriptures. Oh, Yanni, I knew you was going to be up, baby. I knew it was going to come back up because our prayers are effective. Amen. So I just want to touch base a little bit on pruning. And like I just said, uh, and the free Jews, you know, I like to drop the free Jews, our little interludes before we come in. Thank you, Coco, for the time. I, I, I just want you to know that it's not strange what you're going through. It's not that God is punishing you. It's not that you're doing anything wrong. It is because God is pruning you. It is because he's taking you to the next stage. It is because he has to release some things. He got to cut out some things. He's doing some spiritual surgery in you. And it doesn't feel good because the truth of the matter is we are resurfacing certain things. I do feel in the spirit that a lot of us are resurfacing certain things and it's because we didn't respond well the first time and with God God is a type of God that you have to pass all tests he wants you to be perfected he wants you to be lacking nothing he wants the enemy to have no footstool in your life and the truth of the matter is when we don't properly respond well to something you have given the enemy a strategic way a strategic outlook to what aggravates you, to what hinders you. And God is like, no, I can't have that. I can't have that. Because where I am taking him, where I am taking her, I need a full whole being. And the truth of the matter is, what we don't respond well to, come on God, still has a stronghold over us, still has a power over us. Because anything that you cannot properly, I feel God, properly respond to is an indication that it has authority over you and you don't have authority over it. My God, it's a word. It's a word. If your mama continue to get under your skin like that, your mama still got power. Mm, mm, mm. Oh God. If your child still aggravates you like that, you, you do not have power over the child. The child has power over you. If that boss can still aggravate you and get you under your skin like that, you have not conquered that thing. The boss has conquered you. If it's food, if it's a bill, if it's a bill, it shows that you truly don't trust God. If you're sowing, if you're tithing, if you're being financially uh, educated and increasing your money, the Bible says we should have seven, eight streams of income. You should have side hustles you're doing. This is the age of side hustles. Everyone should have a side hustle. It's biblical. If you are doing everything that the word of God is saying, then you should be able to respond well. But the truth of the matter is we're not responding well because we are still out of alignment. It still has authority over us. You still not properly trusting God with your funds. Mm -hmm. That's why you don't sow. Because you're like, he's not getting my money. She's not getting my money. I don't know what Fallon's doing with my money. When that's not your problem. You don't worry about that. You know that you're sowing on good ground. You know that you're doing what he said. He'll have his way with me if I do anything than what I'm supposed to do with it. And the truth of the matter is we're still trying to be wise in our own ways. Remember when we read Proverbs 3? Lean not on your own understanding, which is one of my favorite scriptures. But trust in the knowledge, God. We're leaning on our own understanding. And that's why the thing is resurfacing again. Mm-hmm. God said, I called you to be the head, not the tail. I called you to be above, not beneath. 
But it's crazy how y'all all saying ouch. That's crazy. Can't say amen, say ouch. This must be a personal word. But I know it is. God is saying, I have to prune you because you are not taking the messages and applying it. You are not using your authority the way I need you to use it. So now I've got to step in because we unpartnered because you said, yes, God, I'm a willing vessel. So as long as you said, yes, God, I'm a willing vessel. He said, now I've got to come in and I've got to change things because he orders the steps of the righteous man. He said, and as long as you said yes to me, and as long as you gave me legal right, uh, 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 um, physically and verbally, when you said yes to Jesus, you have partnered with him. And by right, the way the kingdom laws is, he cannot leave you the same. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, he's a good, good God. Amen. So he cannot leave us the same. Although you want to be the same. Although you still trying to clap back. You still trying to do things that feel familiar. That feel comfortable. He's like, no, I got to get you into the uncomfortable state. What do I tell you all the time? You have to learn to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. It's a word. That part. You have to learn how to be uncomfortable. With being comfortable. <laughs> you have to learn how, how not to be dormant. You have to learn that uncomfortability is your walk. That's your new normal. Your new normal is being uncomfortable. It is. Receiving peace. That's not comfortable for many of us. Many of us was, was, was raised in dysfunction. So peace is weird. Trusting. Learning how, learning how to just, it's okay, you, you, you're on Instagram. Learning how to trust God, despite what you see. That's uncomfortable. Because the average mind, the, the world tells us that we are supposed to conjure up something and we're supposed to get it done. The world tells you things like, God bless the child that has it own. No, God bless the child that has God. Because if you had your own, you would need them. Remember, God is not your resource, he's your source. He's your source that sends the resource. Oh, come on, somebody. So you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable because you're going against the grain. Everything that the world teaches you, everything that the world tells you is uncontrary to the word of God. It's actually opposite. The Bible says that he takes the foolish things of the world and confines the wise. He will take things that's foolish and mess everybody up. Mm, mm, mm. So here in John 15, I'm reading for the New King James Version. A lot of you have your Bibles. So listen, be underlining. This is something you want to underline. And for those who don't have your Bibles, it's okay, I'm going to read it. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. So who is his father? The vine dresser. So God is the I am. Jesus is the vine. Jesus is our way to God. You cannot get... Through God any other way. If you hear anybody talking about God, I tell you all the time, be mindful because people will be saying gods, but you have to ask yourself, what God are they talking about? The God with the big G like we serve or the God with the little G? And once you start hearing the universe crap behind it and all these other things, you realize that they're not talking about our God because our God is through Jesus Christ. You have to say things like, oh God, I need peace in my heart. I need peace in my life, my life in Jesus name. The Bible teaches us that whatever you ask for in Jesus name, it is so. So we know that the only way we can get to our father is through Christ. So he says here, he's divine. He's the way he says, but God is divine dresser and every branch in me. Listen here. Listen carefully. That does not bear fruit. He takes it away. And every branch that bears fruit. Oh my God. He prunes. Let me read that again. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. Ouch. So if a person, so number one, he's saying that he, he, he caused us to be here to be fruitful. We're going to get into that teaching. We are all should be fruitful in every area. And I'm not just talking about finances. Why do you think pray to slay ministry is so effective? We're fruitful. You were created to be fruitful, not stagnant, not dormant. That's why it hurts me when I go back to my hometown and I, and I, and I, or I go back to people that I used to hang with and they're doing the same thing, the same way. I'm like, where's the fruit? Where's the fruit? You were created to soar. 
regardless of what the world tells you, oh, if I'm black and all oh, the man tries to hold me down, oh, that's a lie. You are created to soar. And if you have a relationship with God and if you keep him first, you're going to beat all odds. I have a GED. I was in the strip club. I had bisexual relationships. I fought. I did so many things. But look at me today. So it's just excuses. And I live in an area that's predominantly white. My children go to school and they're considered a minority. But that doesn't stop them from receiving things that they should receive. Yeah, we have some incidents where certain scholarships my daughter was supposed to get when they realized she was black. The man didn't even shake her hand on stage. I didn't get, you know, ignorant. I could have I could have got ignorant. I said, you know what, God? I'm going to trust you on that. You know what God did? He gave her a scholarship and doubled it into a private school. Her school is private and very expensive. I couldn't afford that. But that's the things that God does when you have a relationship with him. So there's no excuses to why you can't be fruitful. It can get done. If you partner up with God through the Holy Spirit, he would never leave you. He would never forsake you. The thing is, we like to play victim and we like to make excuses. So it says here that a person that does not bear fruit, he removes. But a person that bears fruit, he prunes. More is required of thee. There's a scripture that says more is required of thee. God is saying, I know. Remember what I said in the interlude. I'm at peace and everything seems like it's going good. And I'm elevating. But here I find myself revisiting certain things. And I'm like, why? Why am I feeling that pain? Why do you have me back here, God? Why? Why am I going through that when I thought it was over? Because you did not respond well. Because I'm pruning you to be perfected. My God, it's a word. I'm pruning you. I'm pruning you. So he says, in every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. That it may bear more fruit. My God. He said, I'm not pruning you. Listen, pruning, think about, I need you to visualize when you're watching a TV show or you see the gardener and they have that, I forgot the name of the tool, but it's the tool they use to prune. And it's like that. And you hear them snip, snip. It's like the garden scissors, right? Snip, snip, snip. It's like my beautiful flowers. I love real flowers, guys. You wanna, you, when we have our conference, you wanna bless me? Give me some flowers. I love flowers, right? So every week I put real flowers on my table, right? But in order for these tulips to be beautiful, they had to be pruned. My God. I'm a real pastor now, huh? Yo? I got my visuals. <laughs> he said, I'm pruning you so you can be a better you. I'm pruning you. So you can bear more fruit. And see, the thing happens is we take pruning personally. We take it personally. We get in our feelings when we're pruned. We get in our feelings when we're chastised and corrected. When we should be responding well like, thank you, Jesus. You're not leaving me the same. Thank you, God, that you love me enough that you want to produce more out of me. Because that's what he's doing. He says, I see something in you. And I want to produce more of that. And some of you today need to forgive yourselves for not forgiving God. Some of you need to forgive God because you're mad at God for pruning you. You're mad at God for doing something different. And some of you are mad at him because some things have resurfaced that you thought you passed. But the truth of the matter is you didn't. He said to me, he said, Fab, you responded not the way I would have wanted you to respond with that. So although I reconciled some things, I'm putting it back in your face because I need you to respond well. Because remember, it's never about them, it's about you. See, we can make it about them. I can make it, oh, my mama this and my mama that. And it's like, no, I need you to respond well. The Bible says to honor thy mother and it also says don't provoke the child. So he says, I need you to respond well. I need to know that she doesn't get under your skin like that. I need to know that when your daughter gets in her moods and, and she doesn't want to listen and she thinks she knows it all, I need you to not get in your feelings and get all uh, discombobulated and want to punch her. Because especially us urban moms, you know, we get like that. Who are you talking to? Real quick, hey, we don't play. And a lot of my Caucasian friends don't either. Because I know my sister Rachel, she don't play. Okay? 
That's why me and her got down like that. I love her. But we don't play with our children. But at that same incident, it is taking something out of you because you are not properly responding well. When you should be responding like, I told you once, I may even told you twice. This third time is on you. That's between you and God, especially when they're a certain age. My kid is 20 years old. I have to learn, this is for someone, you need this. You have to learn to release, they're grown. The way I parent her, though I'm still the parent, is not the same that the way that I parent Ryron Prince, who is 12 and 14. She's grown. Whether you run to realize it or not, he or she is grown. She will be 21 this year. That's grown. At 21, I was married <laughs> on my second baby. That's grown. And whether or not you don't, you, I feel this in the spirit. You feel as if they're not ready. You feel as if they're not that. And that's on you. I hear God saying, but that's you because you were supposed to steward well. You are the one to get them ready. And some of us are not getting them ready because it's a leech. We want to hold on. But you got to release. The same way that you started your life and you had them and had relations, they're supposed to too. They're supposed to find a husband and become one. He's supposed to find a wife and become one. That's called life. It's a word. Can't say amen, say ouch. And God says, I am allowing these things to come back and to hit you in your face again because I need you to respond well, Fallon. Listen, you know me and I'll talk about myself and shame the devil. I need you to respond well. I need you not to get so aggravated that you can feel like your head is bursting and your blood pressure is up. Because a person is going to do what they want to do. So what I need you to do is respond well, pray to me, give it to me, and leave it alone. That's what faith looks like. I'm going to pray, and I'm going to get... Listen, I think it was Panina, Panina, I forget. But Sam, you mother, she couldn't have children. I think her name was Panina. And she gave, she said, God, if you just give me a son, if you just... Her husband loved her so much, she couldn't bore children. She said, if you just give me a son, I will give him to you. And she gave her baby to him. I mean, literally, he was like really raised in the church. Like, really. It's in your Bible. And then he loved her so much and he's so gracious that he gave her more children after that. But what I, I, I say that to say that many of us need to learn how to give situations to God and let it go. And when you don't respond well, it is an indication that you did not give it to God. That you're still trying to conquer that thing up inwardly. You're still trying to, you're still trying to uh, 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 have power over that thing, but you're not using your authority in the right way. It is actually having authority over you. That's why you and your feelings about it. That's why it's aggravating you like that. Because you did not give it to God. You did not respond well. It still bothers you. If you know you're telling your kids something and you keep telling them, you keep telling them, okay, so stop telling, stop saying it. And this is for me. Stop saying it. Let them see now. And I know in my heart, I'm like, I'm trying to stop her. I, I, I see a train wreck. I see a collision. And I'm trying to stop it because that's my baby. But I hear God saying sometimes they got to fall flat. Sometimes they got to they, they gotta, they gotta bump their head for them to get it. And it's not that you are a bad parent. It's not that you did anything wrong. It's that they have their own walk. And God is saying that in every aspect. He's saying, I need you to trust me. Because the truth of the matter is, when you're trying, when you're trying so hard and it's out of what you can do now, and now you're trying to play God, it's because you don't trust me. I prune those who I love to bear more fruit. Oh, this is so good. He said, 
He said, listen, verse two, I'm reading from John 15, verse two, every branch in me that, that does not bear fruit, he takes away, he throws in the fire, he takes away, he say, I, okay, you're not bearing no fruit, I got to move you, that's why certain people are just walking out of your life, and you don't understand, and you you feel like you were so good to them, and you, and, 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 and you, and you honored them, but the truth of the matter is they're not fruitful, and God's saying, they're, they're baggage that's holding you down, I got to remove them out of your life, there's no fruit here, God is a God of multiplying in every area of our life. That's what he does. That's what he does. He excels in everything he does. Everything he does, he does grand. That's why he says things like, I'll make a table before your enemies. You don't got to clap back. You don't got to show them, get the banking card or show them how. I didn't have to do none of that. People told me when I was pregnant with my daughter because of the story and, and it killed me because everybody mama was on drugs. But I think because we was always different and special. You know, my mother is a beautiful, beautiful woman. She is very educated. I mean, she was the only, cr she listened to get her crap. My mother would be doing people taxes, okay? That's the type of mama I got. Used to work in Merrill Lynch and all that in the eighties, okay? Always was fly. That's the type of mama I have. So people were so jealous that they knew he was different. And they would say things like, oh, that's why your baby ain't going to have nothing. You ain't going to have nothing. So when I got married and I moved out the hood, I could have been like, look at me now. Look at me now. But God was like, no, it's going to speak. When they see y'all coming, when, 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 me, when me and Ryan, the babies were little and we got the drop top jags and we coming through the hood and I'm married, my, my dude married me. And I'm and I and I and I changed my life around. It's the proof was in the pudding. I didn't have to do nothing. He set a table before my enemies. Oh, I need y'all to get this. It's all in the word. You just gotta get in the word. So God is saying, I know pruning hurts. Good morning. I know pruning is uncomfortable, but it's necessary because I need you to bear more fruit. And remember, all week he's been teaching us that in order for us, oh, I feel God. I got to get my other stand, y'all. I got to stand. I got to get another one for both phones because it's time for me to start preaching standing up because this, this chair just be containing me and I don't want to be contained because, oh, my God, he's a good God. He's a good God. You mean to tell me that you don't want to leave me the same? You want more of me because you know I have it in me. You have it in you to birth more. But it's uncomfortable. And yes, that thing resurfaced. And yes, that thing might hurt. But I'm not doing it because I don't love you. I'm doing it because I love you. And I need you to bear more fruit. A lot of you just want the minimum. I tell you all the time, provision is minimum. Okay? Provision is meeting your daily needs. Overflow is just that. It's overflow. And I don't know about you, but I want overflow. I don't just want provision. And that's what God is mandating us. He said, I'm mandating you to overflow. It is your time. It is your season. It is your moment. But I don't want you to miss it because you can't properly hold it. Oh God, it's a word. Your capacity isn't ready. You want it, you're praying for it, but you can't hold it. So I'm trying to teach you how to hold it. You saying, oh, I hear this. You saying you want your child to be more responsible. You saying you want more out of your child, but you don't want to let your child go to even see if they can do it. It's a word. You saying you want more. You saying you want more money, but you don't even trust him to do the work to, to birth another job, to get another business. What I told you I was doing when, even though I don't, I don't hear God in that, it's something I was trying to do, but I was in here studying how to do a 501c and this and the third. Because my husband taught me, even though a gentleman told me that wasn't right, he's a fool. You Certain cases you need a middleman, but when you're trying to build an empire, you want the source, you don't want the middleman. And I have learned that certain things that I don't have to pay you for that I can keep my money and I can learn myself so I can be, for one, educated about it and produce it the right way. And then there'll come a time where I can hire this person, that person to do it, but I'll know what's going on. God is saying in this hour, yes, God, I'm going to stop. 
because this is enough. I wanted to go on more scripture. We have Monday. I need you to respond well this weekend. Some of you are going to be tested. Some of you won't, but many of you will. And as it resurfaces, you have to remember this word, even if you have, and I'm going to make sure this goes up on YouTube, even if you have to replay this thing, you will pass this test this time. You thought you passed it last time, but the truth of the matter is it was grace and mercy. You didn't fully pass it. God just gave you grace and mercy on that thing. And he reconciled and, and he healed it and he fixed it. So the way he does things, it's packaged because he gives you peace. So it's packaged like, yeah, I did that. I passed. And it's really like, no, you didn't do nothing. God did it. You didn't do nothing. God did it. But God is saying, I need you to respond well. I need you to pass this test. So the devil can stop using this same thing against you. Because that's why it comes back around again. And God is allowing it because he's pruning you. That was John 15, 1 and 2. <clears throat> I believe it's a 3. Um, this word was for me. I was preaching to myself today. Because I went to bed sad a little bit. <clears throat> I prayed and I gave it to God, but my heart was heavy. And I'm like, I'm trying, I'm doing. And I just heard him so clearly, like, but I'm pruning you. And I need you to respond well to that. You are not fully responding well. It's still getting under your skin. You're still trying to play a dominant force in this situation. And these, excuse me, these are one of these things that you got to pray and let go. That's why I hear in the spirit. It's one of those things that I know he said he gives us power. I know we have authority, but many things are done supernaturally. And see, this is a supernatural type of thing. And it has to be released. But as you releasing it, you have to respond well. Don't get in your feelings. Don't say things. Though I didn't get nasty and everything the way I could have. I said one or two things that I may have meant, but it shouldn't have been said. Just because you feel like that doesn't mean you should say it. Mm -hmm. And I feel convicted because people have feelings. And even though people play hardcore and I'm learning that people who have the biggest mouths, people who make the most confusion who cause the most trauma, are the most sensitive. Mm -hmm. God bless my sister's soul. China was a handful. She really was. But the more and more I spoke to her and seen a different sides of her, she was really sensitive. And to a certain extent, I, I'm even like that. I'm way more sensitive than what people think. You know, because I have this big mouth and this big presence and very powerful, people think that I'm not as sensitive as I am. And I am, I'm sensitive. And I feel like with the situation that I went through, I could have responded differently. Now, although I didn't, it, it wasn't a big blow up and everything, like, you know, how it could have been and everything. It still is opportunity for growth. And I thank God that through the Holy Spirit, he showed me that. And see, that's what his love does. He doesn't just convict you and prune you, but he teaches you as he do it. That's why even as he sings in the scripture we read, he's like, okay, yeah, things that don't produce fruit, I, I, I cast out. And then things that produce fruit, I prune and then I prune some more. But this is why I prune you so you can bear more fruit. So he, 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 he walks your hand. He tells you, but the thing is you have to have a relationship. You got to be willing to listen. And some of you just get so caught up in your feelings and you don't listen. No matter how I felt, I still put myself in a position to listen. I still was able to lay down and talk to him and like, God, this is how I'm feeling right now. My heart is heavy. What? I didn't get on the phone. I didn't text and do this and telling people my business. Cause we're so quick to tell people our business. Sometimes we tell too much. When we should be praying. When we should be praying and hearing from God. I only share certain things with you because I'm the leader of this church. I have to in, in, in some type of ways. So you can learn. 
And even then, it's still, I'm still discreet on about what I, what I share because everybody can't handle everything. I give a, a teaching on, you know, jealousy and be mindful of how you act and stuff. Next thing you know, my phone's going off the hook. I'm not jealous of you. Then I, I'm like, did I, I didn't say that. Or you have a guilty conscience? So I got to be steadily mindful of how I say and what I say. But I am called to a higher calling. So I have to be transparent. The day I said yes <laughs> to Christ, that to allow him to use me in this type of a, a manner. Oh, child, I had to throw a lot of things out the window. <laughs> a lot of things. Because now my life is like a, ma a magnifying glass. And believe it or not, before I said a hardcore yes, it was like that anyway. From the time my husband died, everybody's like, oh, what's going to happen now? I heard they took, I heard they stole her safe. I heard he had money. I heard this. I... But all of it was a part of the plan. Even though I digress, I still, ha I still have it because it's a message. And the message is, is you have to have a relationship with God. You have to understand that people are watching you. People are depending on you. And there are many people that are depending on you to get it right. It's more people that are depending on you to get it right because they are attached to you than there is that people that are hating on you. And that's why my ministry is not focused on haters. A lot of people building their ministries like that because they want to be popular. They want to tell you what's popular. My thing is to be effective and it is you against you. What could you have done? There's a million things that I can say in a situation that have resurfaced in my life and I can try to put it on everybody. No, what could you have done foul? To pass that test. To respond well. Not with this person and that person. No. What could you have done? And that's what God showed me when I was laying in the bed. Although my heart was heavy. He said, but this is how you could have handled that. You didn't have to say this. You didn't have to say that. You didn't have to do that. It's a reflection. Even communion. What did I teach you? Communion is a reflection to remind us that he died on that cross. That's why we drink the drink and we eat the bread. But it's a reflection of you. What could you do better? What could have you done better? And it will come again. So as you go this weekend, you keep that in mind. I will see you Monday. I love you to help. Sow your seeds. I don't care if you have a dollar. Sow on this word. So that the devourer can stop playing with your money. Those that are on uh, Instagram, if you need the information how to sew, if you don't do it regularly, just DM me. I'll give it to you. Uh, Facebook, I will put it in the description. And I pray that this Rimmer word bless you because this was a powerful word. God truly blessed us like he always does. So now he's saying to you, more is required of you. And what I'm saying as your pastor and your leader Pray to slay and respond well. Pass the test. Amen? Pass the test. I love you guys.